sorry about that. Uh, earlier we had some technical difficulties. Um, What's up, Nye? Uh, bro, why the fuck you gonna come in there and say battle rap needs me? Battle rap don't need me. The fuck? Alright, um, a uh, few things that I want to capitalize on real quick. <clears throat> One thing I want to speak on is. Something that's happening in today's era, which is, all right, before I go into that, let me use, let me change the, the, the context of this word, our people, right? So when I use the word our people, I don't necessarily mean black people. Right? right? When I use the word our people, I don't necessarily mean black people. I mean like, our people, as in the people who understand in this world, right? Most people say, yeah, our people, they'd be like, oh, black people or whoever, whatever race they are. So for me, right, when I say something like our people, like, I mean, like, people who get it, like, because the people who get it is a specific type of race, like, right? You got different races, and then you got the race of people who get it, right? So when I say our people, like, I mean, like, us, like, the motherfuckers who actually get it. So, now, when I use the word my niggas, right, when I use the word my niggas, that means black people, right? So I use the word, like, my niggas, like, yo, them niggas over there, them niggas, that mean like, the black people, right? So, today we're going to speak on them niggas over there, right, which is my niggas, right? So... I sit back and I think about stuff and the stuff that I think about, it sends me into a loophole of infinity possibilities of understanding that we really, really fucked on a level of being fucked that, that like it's unfuckable. Like we really fucked on a level that's like beyond fucked. Like, fucked, fucked, like, unfuckable, right? And we, like, niggas in general have become dependent, and not only dependent, but addicted to the very thing that destroys us. Right? Like, black people have become addicted to the very thing that destroys us. We are addicted to it. I just seen a nigga say, I, I, like, a nigga said this in the record. A nigga said, I drink lean till I'm dead, I don't give a fuck. Wait, what he said? I drink lean till I'm dead. I don't give a fuck. If I catch a nigga slipping, you see a nigga buck. If the police on my ass, I'm giving up. What? Now, that ain't what bothered me. It, it ain't even the lyrics that bothered me. The lyrics didn't bother me. What bothered me the most was the comments. This, it wasn't the lyrics, bro. It was the comments that bothered me the most. Of people like, this hard. This is what hip-hop is all about. This hard. This is hip-hop right here. This hard. This is, this hard. He going off. 
that's what bothered me the most. It was the comment section of people saying this hard. Look, we got to change as a, as a, we have to, like, when you really narrow this down, I'm a, like, I'm a break something down to this world in a way that y'all don't really understand. And I say this over and over and over and over and over. Words have power. I'm going to say this over and over and over. Words have power. You can literally change your life by the things you say. You can literally speak success into existence by the things you say. The brain also has a stomach. Look, I'm going to break something down to y'all that, that y'all never probably really thought about. I'm going to break something down to y'all. You ever look at the brain, right? I'm going to break this down to y'all. Some, did, you, some people probably put this into perspective, but some people haven't. You ever look at the brain and then you ever look at an intestine? The brain looks exactly like an intestine. You ever look at that? You ever look at a brain and then you look at an intestine? Like, it looks the same. Like, the, the brain looks like an intestine. So your brain technically eat just as well as your belly eat. Your stomach eat and digest and your brain also eat stuff and digest. The brain might be connected to the belly. That's why they say follow your gut feeling, but your gut feeling is also a thought, right? So they say follow your gut feeling, but your gut feeling is also a thought. So it's like your brain and your stomach is kind of like connected in a way, right? So think about what you feed your brain, right? Fuck what you put in your body. What you feed your brain now, on top of what you feed your brain, the ears is like the mouth to the brain, right? So think about what you consume through your ears. Now, when you think about the shit you consume through your ears, then think about your life based on the shit you listen to. I want everybody to put this into perspective. Think about your life versus the shit you listen to. And then ask yourself, oh shit, I'm fucked. Think about it. Think about the shit you listen to. And then think about your life. And it all start making sense. You know what goes inside my ears? Successful shit. That's it. All successful shit. I sit up all night for hours. I don't even. People like, yo, what you listen to? They like nothing. I don't listen to music. Nigga, my brain don't got space for music. And the and only music I listen to is music that actually can better me as a human being. It's not that I hate rappers or it's not that I hate. If the music cannot better me as a person, I'm not listening to it. It's not that I have no hatred in my heart or nothing. I just don't listen to what can better me as a person. On top of that, I'm up all night. Like, what goes into my mind, I'm watching. Yo, how to be a trillionaire in five years. Like, this is the shit I'm watching. How to be a fucking millionaire in five years. How to 10 year plan. Like these are the shits that I'm watching on like, like how to be a master editor at Adobe After Effects. Like how to like, this is the shit 
when I'm up all night spending hours and hours and hours online, or what I'm listening to, audio audio books or audio lectures or all type of shit, this the shit I'm listening to to better my brain. So when I walk in a scenario, I don't have no weakness. Who I am right now, I could walk in any room and know exactly what everybody is talking about. I could walk in the film set and know, oh, that's a red cam, that's a Ari cam. What Ari is that? Is that Ale- uh, Ari Alexa Mini? Or that's the XL version, the medium format version. Oh, what lens you shooting on? Is that the la- uh, uh, Atlas uh, Anamorphic 2X? Was it 40 minutes? Bro, like, I could walk in any any environment. What are we talking about? Basketball? We talking about soccer? We talking about scuba diving? We talking, what, I could walk in any environment and be completely fluent at whatever anybody's talking about. Because this is the shit I study, bro. Any, it don't matter. It, I could walk in. in what y'all editing on? Maya 3D? Oh, shit. Bring that over there. Let's look up. Bro, it don't matter. Bro, whatever. So what I'm saying, we got to change what what goes in our ears. I'm to come grab these two machines. What machines? The two machines. All right. Uh, She's I, about I, to empty it out. All right. Can you go do it for me then? I don't know where you're stuck at. It's in the black bag. Wait. In the trunk. Stank. Where's the quarters? Yeah. Do I really need this much quarters? Right, close the door for me, all the way. All right. Right, so it's about, like, people, especially people in my neighborhood, right? A lot of people be like, yo, they don't really come around, or they went Hollywood, or, you know, they probably don't fuck with me like that. It has nothing to do with none of that. Me not coming around is a protection plan. Not for my physical being. Because I don't really care about physical. Because when you in a, when you have a specific energy in this world, it don't matter if you here or you dead. Your fucking message is going to be continued. Me, my message is going to be continued whether I'm alive or dead. It don't matter. I've already set you my... You need to take... Put him up. He's crying. He fell down. I his butt. Come here. You fell down, mister? Oh. Huh? Say what's up. What? 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 Where are you going? Here. Right. Here. You're going to fall down, mister. Right? So look. Going back to what I was saying, right? It's more based on what I hear and what I don't like to hear. Right? I tell everybody this. I tell all my friends and all my family. Change. We have to change what we listen to. We have to change what we say. We have to change what we speak. Because literally do we know we are building our own walls and creating our own reality and being stuck in our own prisons. For example, I hit one of our homies and he was like, yo, day, you feel me? What a nigga got to do to really make it? Nigga trying to get out there with you. I said, look. He said, what you think about this record? I said, look, the song starts off with, I'm a real nigga. I never leave the hood. Stay down. Like, wait, what? How you going, how do you expect to make it out when you making a music, you making music about never leaving? This don't make sense. How do you expect to make it out? When you making music about never leaving. <laughs> like, do, like, are we listening to what we saying? Okay. He said, look, they, 
No, they they fuck with this. The 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 hood fucking with. Of course, the hood fucking with this because nobody want to leave. Of course, the hood fucking with this because it's crab in the bucket. Nigga don't really want to see you make it out. So of course they gonna fuck with it. So you can stay in with them. The fuck you mean? You got a bunch of motherfuckers that really don't want to leave. Of course they gonna rock with a song that say they ain't gonna leave. Bro, I said, look, little homie. If you really want to get somewhere in life, you got to start rapping about getting somewhere in life. You got to speak your own shit into existence. You got to start rapping about getting somewhere in life. Bro. You got to start rapping about everything that you really want to achieve in life. You got to start rapping about it. You got to start speaking this shit into existence. You know what I said, yo, your next song that you need to make when you go in the studio, I gave them a mission, right? I said, look, I want you to do me a favor. There's one word that I want you to study. He said, what, big homie? I said, study. I was, I was kind of shocked that he was calling me a big homie, but I forgot the homie, little homie, like 17, 18. I am 35, so I'm like, you know what? I'm a big homie. You feel me? I was kind of happy a little bit. I'm like, yeah, damn. I'm really like a big homie now. I really ain't young no more. I'm like a real live. I'm about to be 40 in a couple of more years. I'm like an OG in the hood. Anywho. So I'm like, wow. All right. Hey, you ain't about to eat my charger. Here. Here's something you can play with, sir. Right? So I said, look, little homie. I got a word that I need you to study. He was like, what? I said, look. There's a word. I want you to go type this word. Go to Google on your phone and type in this word. I said, type in Antarctica. You know what the homie told me? What's that? I said, damn. The homie told me, what's that? I said, type in Antarctica. The homie said, what's that? At that moment, I knew how deep the program was. I said, this program deep. This program very deep. But no, because I can't even say he dumb. Because I grew up in the hood. And they, I didn't know. When I, I had, like, at that moment. My brain paused for a second, and I wanted to say that. I, look, I wanted to say what you said. I wanted to say, damn, the homie's stupid. But then I had to go back to the time when I was 17, 18, and I was in Watts. I didn't know what Antarctica was neither. Bitch, I only knew Century, Crenshaw, nigga, the 117, nigga, nigga the furthest I knew was Cerritos. When I was 18, the furthest I knew was Cerritos. But anything past Cerritos, it didn't even exist. It ain't funny, but it's true. Anything past Cerritos, it don't even exist. So I couldn't even be mad at the little homie, bro. I like, I couldn't even be. You gotta understand why it's different. Why it's ain't like you know niggas and niggas that grew up in Crenshaw and all these other gangs. They get out. You feel me? They be going to the Crenshaw malls and you feel me Beverly centers and shit. Like a lot of these other gangs, they be. You feel me? They get to see it. Niggas be going to Westchester and shit. They get to see it a little bit. But when you grow up in Watts. <coughs> if you like a real, real, real live project, baby, nine times out of ten, you ain't going past Central. Right? If you like a real, real project, baby, nine times out of ten, depending on what side you on, you got about a ten block radius. <coughs> Right? 
you might go from 95th to 106th. That's about it. Right? So, I couldn't even be mad at the little homie. So, I said, look, little homie, I'm going to really expand your mind real quick. I want you to get online, go to Google, type in Antarctica. I'm good. Nigga just got like a little cold. <clears throat> I want you to get online, type in Antarctica. So, bam, he get online. He texts me like about an hour later. He said, hey, big homie, man, this cold. What what type of what type of like area is this? So, Easy, this is cold. Man, this, this look like some shit. I said, you see all that shit, fool? He said, man, this, this, nigga ain't never knew what this. What's this? This is cold. It's like some ice type shit. You know, homies talk crazy. Man, this is like some Frosty the Snowman type shit. What's this? This is cold. <laughs> so I said, look, I want you to study that, man. Read all the articles. Read the descriptions and all that. And then I want you to make a song about this. I want you to I want your next song to be based around Antarctica. And not only do I want your song to be based around Antarctica, I want you to start envisioning yourself there. Right? I want you to start telling yourself, I'm gonna get to Antarctica. Like, make that a goal. Right? Make that a goal. Make that a, a personal goal of yours. You're going to get to a place that technically seems impossible. Make your hit record Antarctica and make that a goal, right? <clears throat> Three years later, he still ain't made me 21 right now. He just hit me recently. Hey, Daylight, man. Your nigga just been slacking, man, you know? You better not bite me, homie. I ain't playing. Yeah, yeah, all right. Hold on real quick, y'all. Right? So three years later, he hit me up. Man, the nigga been slacking, man. The nigga just going, I'm going to get on it. I, I said, hey, fool, what you waiting on? I said, what's stopping you from making this record? Right? I asked him, I said, what's stopping you from making this record? What's what is it that's really stopping you? You know what the homie told me? The homie said, hey, fool, I'm going to keep it all the way real with you. Nigga low-key scared. I don't want the homies to call me weird. I said, what? He said, man, I don't, I don't want the homies to call me weird, man. The homies are... Like this, this like low key weird daylight. Like, huh? Um, so then, I started to think of the psychological issue. Right, this is the psychological effect of the hood. Your family is all you got. Right, when growing up in the urban community in the in the in the lower class environment. Your family is all you got. Your friends and your family is all you got. And, you know, people from Watts, we really don't think outside of Watts. So we don't, we know that nobody outside of Watts care about us. So the people that you got that care about you, you kind of make sure they, they pump your ego up a little bit. So you kind of make sure you cater to them just so they can make you feel like you're worth something because... If you lose your friends and family in the hood, you pretty much feel I don't got nobody, right? 
So if you lose your friends and family in the hood, you you pretty much will go into a state to where you're like, I don't have nobody. So most people have to, they have to cater to that. So he said, man, like, man, I'm sad, man, the nigga just, you know, like, I don't really know how to say this, man. I'm crib, it's just, you already know, daylight, like, nigga just ain't trying to be looking weird out here. I said, hey, fool, you ever been on the airplane? He said, yeah. I said, when you went to the airport, right, how many niggas you seen dressed up and how many niggas you seen weird? How many weird-looking niggas you seen at the airport? He said, man, oh, gee, the whole airport was weird to me. I said, now think about that. If the whole airport weird... And they all flying around the world. Don't you think you need to get on the weird side? He, he said, what? I said, if all the weird niggas is flying all to different countries and all type of shit. They out here. They have... I said, hey, fool, you know that thing that you got when you trying to be cool? Hey. Here, get some more moms. Here. Move, man. Move, Coos. Hold on real quick, y'all. Hold on, hold on, hold on real quick. Sorry about that. But yeah. So going back to what I said. So pretty much what was stopping him from making the song was based off the simple fact he didn't want the hood to think he was a weirdo. And I, it made me realize, like, because you got to think. Like, you start thinking about things from both perspectives. You, you know, you got to think about... Where I think about is who I was when I was 18, right? I can't never act like I've always been like this. I can't never act like I've always just been completely aware 
of my situations and what's been going on. I'm not afraid to admit to the world that I was once a lost nigga. Right? I mean, I always seen something different. But I'm not afraid to admit to the world that at one point of time in my life, like, I didn't get it. Right? <clears throat> so, where I... Where I, where I, what I do now is I like to use like both universes. Like I, I use the right side of my mind to where I'm who I am now. Then I use the left side of my mind. And I go, that's who I was. And then I start to compare the two and I go, yo, I was once in that same boat where I wanted to be accepted in the community. I wanted people to like me. I wanted people to say this about me. I wanted people to say that about me. And I never wanted to be on the weirdo end or I never and it clicked in my head as I got older. I started to look at the people who run the world. I started to look at the people who are extremely successful. I started to look at the Bill Gates. Like for example, in the hood we respect all the wrong people. Right? Like niggas be like, yo, I'm trying to go out like Scarface. What? What the fuck? Oh, when I was younger, that was one of my favorite movies. Scarface, Blow. You feel me? All the dope, dope dealer movies. That was like that's the that's the end goal. Like, you feel me? But like as I got older, I'm like, nigga, I'm trying to go out like Steve Jobs. I'm trying to go out like Bill Gates. You feel me? Like the people that I start to idolize and the people that I start to really look into, it changed as I got older. Now, this is all a condition that comes with moving out of the hood or moving away from these environments to where your mind is cluttered because that's the thing that happens in the urban community. Your mind get cluttered, right? Your mind get cluttered in your friend's opinions and your mind get cluttered in a scenario based on how you want to be perceived amongst your friends, right? Or your pe your uh, your peers or whoever, right? So... Your mind gets cluttered, and when you're inside the cesspool, you can't you can't take a bath. You can't take a bath inside a mud castle. Right? It's pointless to wash up when you live inside a dirt house. You get what I'm saying? You can't you can't be clean inside the sandbox. Like if you in the sandbox, you sandy. Like you can't be clean. Like it's not possible. So it helps a lot when you distance yourself and you look at the overall situation from the outside in. It helps a lot mentally and physically. You're able to like see things different when you're not in the cloud of smoke. Right? Okay. Right. When you're not in the cloud of smoke, it's very easy. Like it's very easy to understand there is a cloud of smoke when you're in the smoke and you get used to the smoke, you don't even understand that there's smoke. You think the smoke is regular air. It's like the Plato's cave theory, right? If you inside the cave for so long and somebody else go outside the cave, like they not going to believe that you get what I'm saying. Are y'all familiar with Plato's cave? Right? Exactly. <clears throat> so I go back into those thoughts where I go, okay, boom, it's very easy to look at this shit from the outside in. It's very easy to point the finger at the shit when you're not in the scenario, right? It's very easy to say, well, they just fucking savages and shit like that. But then like, and that's how other people look at my neighborhood. They go, they just savages. We ain't going to help them. They don't care, but they don't really understand the gist of like why people are the way they are. <laughs> So, this is the thing, right? There's two things, there's two words that will forever damage us when growing up in the hood. And those two words are weird and mark, right? Nobody wants to be weird and nobody wants to be a mark. If you're a weird old nigga, you getting fucked over by even people who are close to you. If you're a mark nigga, then niggas gonna rob you. Even your close friends and your family members might possibly rob you. Those are two words that are literally destruction to people in a lower class community. And those two words hold people up to a specific agenda. Right? Just the word weird and the word mark. 
Those two words hold people up to a specific agenda, right? Niggas, you come outside every day, you got to look cool because you don't want to be labeled as weird. You come outside every day with your chest pumped out because you don't never want to look like a mark. And you willing to kill a nigga to show you ain't no mark. Those are the two things that are, are literally detrimental to our community. So, <clears throat> outside of those two realms, right? This is why I tell everybody, if you got to look, I'm going to give everybody in my neighborhood. And if there's niggas from my neighborhood that just goes to Watts or anybody in the lower class community, I'm going to give you a way to get out easy. So, bam, I'm gonna, look, I'm going to give you a I'm going to give you a bomb way to get out. So when you when you make you bust a move, get busting plays and get you a nice little stack, a stack or two. What you do, you go downtown, you go to the soup district, right, where you get your suit set. You go get you a nice little suit for about a hundred, bam, get you some fly shoes, some dress shoes, bam, get you a nice little briefcase. Now, what I want you to do, once you get your fly shoes, your nice suit, your nice little briefcase, some clean though, some like, but don't get no colorful pimp shit. Get like some clean, like a nice, you know, nice tailor-made black and white suit, boom, boom, boom. Get your briefcase. Get you a nice little edge up, you feel me, clean cut, boom. You go downtown L.A. I'm going to tell you, peep, peep what I'm trying to tell y'all. You go downtown L.A. about 12 o'clock when it's lunchtime. Everybody out eating, boom. You cash out on the meal, boom. You eat at one of those little fancy Spencer restaurants, boom. So then, But you eat at the bar. You always got to eat at the bar. Don't never get a table because you can't really conversate at the table. You eat at the bar where people at, boom. So you see a little bad little shorty over there. She looked like she worked too. So boom, you bust her. You get up on her, man. Hey, you know, but you can't get up on her in the hood talk. You can't. Hey, what's the deal? What's good with you? You can't get up on her in the hood talk. Uh, you got to get up on her on the rich nigga talk. Looking mighty swell over there. Say I buy you a jink. Uh, let me get let me get a Chardonnay on the rocks. This one's for the beautiful young lady over here on the side. She gonna be looking at you like, oh my god, he's handsome. You got to change, look, bro, you got to change your cap. You got to change your cap. Bam. Right? Change your cap. So now she's smiling. She's feeling it. And you're just like, oh, hold on. This, you got to bluff it, though. Like, why she laughing and all that? You're like, oh, just a second. Then you pick up your other phone. Remind you, this phone ain't even on. It's like a, it's like a, like your old iPhone that you had, but you still keep it charged up in case this other one died. You can use the Wi-Fi. So, bam, right? You got your other iPhone. Bam, you're, oh, excuse me. Oh, oh, excuse me, just a second business call. Oh, yeah, I fly out in the morning. Well, I mean, if you want to invest into that, we could. Let's, let's just dump about $2 million into those stocks, and we'll be all right. All right, well, I'll, I'll give you a call as soon as I leave here, John. Oh, yeah, um, <clears throat> but, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so how's your day going? Right now, you got to think. She in her mind, she already thinking. Oh, he like a super rich business nigga. <coughs> right. So bam, right. You look, my nigga. You got to have cap to infinity, right. So boom, right. You got on your nice player suit. You didn't bought her a drink. Boom. You already bluffed her with the million dollar investment phone call. She automatically sold. She sold already. She sold. You're like, oh, well, you know, if, you know, you know, I work around here. So if you're free tomorrow, let's grab a bite to lunch. Boom. Right. So tomorrow. Right. Boom. You meet the bitch tomorrow. Boom. Y'all eat lunch. Boom. You cash out. Remind you, you got to cash out in the beginning because you got an epic plan at the end. Right, <clears throat> so you cash out, boom, boom, boom. You know, you, y'all eat some exclusive shit. Oh, what do you like to eat? You know what? I know exactly what you look like you're into. Let me get the bourgeois bourgeoisette. She looking at you like, what's that? It don't even matter what it is. It's the most expensive thing on the menu, but it doesn't even matter. I know you're gonna like it because I know you're a type of woman. Boom, right? So you order some exclusive fly shit. Boom. Remind you, you got on the same suit. But I'm going to tell you how to finesse. So you just go get another undershirt. So this today you got on the white shirt. Tomorrow you got the black undershirt on. So you get the Bazain Bouwaf. You feel me? Let me get the Bazain Bouwaf with, a, with a, a hinge of Pasis 
and it's Shamas, right? Boom, so you get some exclusive shit, some shit she don't even know about. Bam, right? So now she mesmerized in the sauce. She don't even, she don't even know you a grade A project, nigga. She mesmerized in the sauce. Boom, boom. So, right? All right, so this is what you do. You got to do the real rich nigga shit. You got to take about three or four bites and tell the waiter, come get it. I know as a project nigga, this going to hurt your soul because you throwing away all the good food, but it's the sacrifice for the greater cause. So, boom, you take a few bites, you feel me? And then get your little napkin. Oh, my God. You know, this diet's killing me. Uh, waiter, uh, could you take this away? Boom. Right? So you gotta you gotta sacrifice half of the hundred dollar meal. This a hundred dollar meal, but you gotta sacrifice it. You forget for the great it's for the greater cause. Hear me out. It's for the greater cause. So boom, right? So the whole time you feel me? The whole time she just like, damn, this nigga just in her mind, she like, he just ate two bites of a hundred dollar meal. He got dummy money to blow. Oh, I'm lit. Right, she already texting her homegirls. Hey, girl. Hey, Tiffany. I just met this super rich investor. Oh my God, he's so handsome. Now you gotta think. When they think you rich, you you become the sexiest nigga in the world. When they think you got it, when they think you got it, got it. Oh, you become dummy. Oh, he's so nice and sexy. Look at his structure. Oh my God, right. So, boom, you got to bluff her one more time, right? This is how you bluff her one more time. Oh, hold on just a second. I have an have a important call. So, you walk off. You go, what? What do you mean? What do you mean the stock's drop? We'll dump more into it. I don't care if it's $2 million, $3 million, $5 million, $10 million. It doesn't matter. Dump more into it. It's my company. If I want to take a 10,000 loss, I can. It's my company. Oh, it's, it's going to be okay. It's going to be. Yeah. All right. Don't call me until the. <coughs> don't call me until the 10,000. I mean, the 10 million is in there. Right. Boom. Bluff. Dummy bluff. Right. Boom. She just looking at you like this nigga got billions to blow. Who the fuck is this guy? Right. So, after you just blew up on the phone, you, oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry about that. You know, company, you know, my managers and all, I mean, my employees and stuff, they just really don't understand business. But anywho, um, so with that being said, I got to go um, take care of some business stuff. But, you know, uh, if you're not doing nothing this weekend, let's hang out. Boom. Whole time. She a lawyer, though. Whole time. You a project nigga. You don't got a dime. She got dummy money. Right. <coughs> so boom, Saturday came. You hit her up. Uh, how you doing? Um. So I was thinking, I was thinking we do something basic today, right? Cause you know y'all been, you know, I don't, I don't want you to think I'm like some type. Of, now this is when girls never want you to tell them the truth, but you always gotta tell them the truth. But you gotta tell them the truth in a live format, so they don't ever. So when the shit hit the fan, you could tell them, "I told you." So you you gotta hit her with the reverse psychology bluff. Oh, you know, I figured. You know, sometimes I just get beyond myself. I would love to do something normal this weekend. Like, i you know what? Let's do something like in and out. You know, because at the end of the day, it's not like I'm a baller. <laughs> It's not like I'm some rich guy to just have all the money in the world. So let's do something simple, like in and out <laughs> She's like, oh, I love in and out You know, we don't have to eat expensive all the time. So boom, right? You didn't already told her the truth, though. But she think you bluffing. But you didn't told her the God honest truth, right? It's not like I'm some millionaire that has fucking $10 million to dump into an investment. <laughs> Boom. So y'all go to the in and out. So you got to think in her mind, she like, oh, you already been paid. I'm in and out on me. So boom, you are, you like, in your mind, you got to give her the hood thing. Right? But don't, don't let her see the hood thing. You feel me? You got it. All right. Um, what do you want? You go, oh, I'm not really that hungry. Uh, let me get a double, double animal fries.
I'm not really that hungry, but I'll take a double double with Admiral Fry, number one. Two whole grilled onions. So, boom. Let me tell you what you got to do, though, right? So, boom. You get the animal fries. You get your meal. Boom, boom, boom. Let me get a milkshake, too. But, boom. Right? <clears throat> so, you get your... She already cashed out on the in and out Boom. The bill, like, at least 30. You feel me? So, boom. This what you do, though. Just so, sh so you can stick to not really saying you that hungry. You're not that hungry. So, boom. <laughs> right? You just... When y'all get to the table and you eat it, you, look, let me tell you how you got a bluffer. You got to eat the burger with a fork and a knife. This how you... She going to know you exclusive if you eat the burger with a fork and a knife. My nigga, so you take all the wrappers off the burger, bam, bam, bam. You get your knife, your fork, boom, boom, boom. You cut a piece of the burger, you eat it. Wipe your, wipe your mouth after every bite, boom, boom, boom. You take about three bites and be like, you know, this diet. You know what I'm saying? Boom. Uh, can I get a to-go to -go bag? this boom so now you pack your animal fries you pack your burger in the bag boom 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 you wrap it up you feel me you know you sip your milkshake a little bit wrap it up boom hey could you put that in the freezer or something until it's time for us to go all right cool boom boom right now you gotta think the whole time you saving this burger for when you get in the car because no you know when you get in the car and you away from her you about to go dummy right but but remind you you got to keep your bluff up Right, keep your cap all the way up. Boom, right? So boom, she texting her friend. You go, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I have to use the bathroom really quick, you know. I just don't like all this grease and stuff over my hands, right? The whole time you go to the bathroom, you gotta lick the dog shit out of them but cheese fingers. <laughs> you know how you get the, the cheese that be in your nail? Yep. All right. Boom. Right. You go to the bathroom. You getting all the little leftovers out the fingers. Bam, bam. Right. But she whole time she in there texting her friends like, oh, my God, I have no idea what type of guy this guy is. He's it's almost too good to be true. Like, girl, he wipes his mouth after every bite of food. He washes his hands. He's so clean. His fingernails are clean. Whole time. She don't know you. You, you think people go to the bathroom to clean their nails, bitch? Hood niggas will get all the juice up out of it. Yep, them clean. Fuck you talking about? Bam, right? So look, right? So she texting her friends like, oh my God, this guy is amazing, right? So boom, when you get out the bathroom, you got to come out the bathroom on the phone. Remind you. Your other phone that ain't on, that's your super cap machine, right? Boom. All right, I'm flying out right now. Us. I don't know how to say this, but they I have to fly to Dubai. I don't I don't really right now. All right, so this this is what you got to do. You got to grab her hand. You feel me? Grab her hand. Bow your head to her hand and go sorry this date ended so I'm sorry the date ended so fast but you know when business calls you know I just I have to take care of it it's just hard running your own company <sighs> all right well I'll book the flight now so you know I gotta fly to Dubai I'll be going for about a couple of weeks or so so I, I just try to give you a call when I'm there or if I can't reach you when I'm there I'll most definitely call you soon as I get back so you you know <sighs> I'm gonna miss you Boom, right? So now you got to think. She think you in Dubai. You in the hood. She think you way in Dubai. Boom. This is why I tell y'all, y'all need to learn Photoshop and all that. Because now you can Photoshop yourself right in Dubai. Boom. And if you want to really bluff her out, all you got to do is go to Ikea. Go to Ikea and take pictures like you in one of them exclusive room settings. I'm talking about you go to Ikea, they got some exclusive set of look like you didn't cashed out. So boom, you go to Ikea, bam, you take a few flick flocks, you feel me? You take a few flickers in the little Ikea bed, you feel me? Look like you dummy lit. Boom. Right? I'm, bro, this ain't even, this a different type of catfish. This a catfish catfish. So boom. 
right? So you steady sending their pictures of you on the bed and the, and the IKEA bed. So boom, you got to learn how to Photoshop all the tags out though. So you take you take the picture, they put in Photoshop, Photoshop all the tags out. Boom, right? Yes, yo, sun sunset. It's a lot of lies, but at the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do to get your your grand prize, right? So boom, you sending her all type of pictures of you in the hotels, fake pictures from Google and all type of shit, pictures of sand and niggas on camels and shit, all type of you bluffing it out. Boom, a couple of weeks later, you get back. Oh, how you doing? I'm I'm home. Um, you know, um, just want to let you know, like I've really really been thinking about you. You know, um, I don't know if I'm like moving too fast or not, but like. Like, I feel we got something, right? Whole time, she been mesmerized since she went. She ain't even been able to go to work right. She just like, I didn't found my knight in shining armor, right? She already ready to fuck. Girl be ready. They ready to trim as soon as you buy them a plate. You buy a girl a $100 plate, you got access to all the drawers ASAP. But you you don't want them yet. <clears throat> mm. So this what you do. You don't. She think you ready to tell her to come over. There's nobody in the living room. Watch him. All right. She think you no, ready. Seriously. Okay. Like now. I ain't. He's going to fall down. She think you ready to tell her to come over, but you don't tell her to come over. You tell her, hey, you, let's, let's do a movie. So, right? How did you get over there? What? So, boom. Two seconds. I'll come her. All right. So you got to do a movie, right? So the whole time, she like, oh, what movie you want to see? You know, the Captain Marvel came out, you know, you know, or the motherfucking Avengers came out. You got to tell her, no, I'm not really into action movies. It's kind of violent. Now I was thinking we watch something like Saving Grace or, you know, I can love. You know, you got to watch a, a movie that a typical black nigga would never watch. The Notebook or some shit like that. You got to watch one of those movies where it's about a couple going through something. You got to watch one of them, right? You can't never watch no action-packed movie. You got to watch a movie to where she would she would be shocked that you about to watch. What? Oh, my God. Boom, right? <coughs> you got to watch one of those movies that show relationships being good and lasting forever. One of those movies. You know, one of those movies that girls watch, that boys don't watch. Bam, right? Titanic one of them. Boom, right? So right, you got her. Boom, y'all in the movie. So boom, when the movie when the movie over, she already you this is psychological warfare. So when the movie go off, her her all her like her like pheromones and endorphins and all her all her her chemical balance is completely like in a whirlpool, she like, this nigga is amazing. He's financially riff, rich. He got a heart. He's sensitive. He cares. This nigga is God, right? So, boom. Let me tell you, let me tell you, here come the epic blood. Boom, right? Now, you, you disappear on her, right? Boom. After the movie... After the movie go off, you got to disappear on her. You ain't got no no phone call, no nothing for at least about a month. <clears throat> right? You got to, you got to. You use all them quarters? What do you mean? You still have a lot. You're so stank. Like basketballs. Good. Suck them. What the hell, they run? Right? You disappeared for like a month. Now she like, what the hell happened? She calling you, blowing you up, all that. She don't know what happened. You disappeared whole month. Now she blowing you up. She don't know what happened. Man, what the? Now she texting everybody. Man, I, I don't know where. Maybe I did something wrong. Right? Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> right? So boom, you got a park. Remember where y'all first met at the uh, at the the bar? Boom, you got to go to the bar. Remind you, you got to look like you haven't shaved. You got to look, you got to look dummy bum, right? You you chilling at the bar. You ain't shaved. You feel me? Hey. Watch your baby. Where is 
you chilling at the bar, you ain't shaved, you look like you stressed out, all type of shit. She gonna run. To, oh my God, where have you been? What happened? You know, uh, like, you know, like I invested all my money into a company and uh, like I lost it all. Right? She looking at you like, oh my God, like it's gonna be all right. Like you know, I'm here for you. Like man, I I just I don't have anything. I don't have nothing. Like, like nothing. It's just, <laughs> right? She like, well, you know, I, I like, uh, like my father left me with a savings. Like, if you need, if you need, like, you know, something to just get you on your feet. Like, I'm, I'm here for you. <laughs> like, you gotta remember the project thing. <laughs> okay. Um. Like, uh, anything you could do for me to help. Like, anything. Like, I. I don't even mind, like, now you, you gotta think you a real project nigga, so you don't really gotta go for the dummy bag, you just need a small one, like, you know, like, just something to just keep my bills paid for, like, the next couple, you know, she like, so you gotta think, you a billionaire? In her mind, you a billionaire, so you thinking, she thinking you about to ask her for at least a million dollar loan or some shit like that, no, you ain't gotta go for no meal ticket, and let me, get, I just need like 10000 I'll be all right. In her mind, she's going to be like, 10000 What? That's like a card note. Oh, oh yeah, I'll get that to you in the morning. Right? Boom. Because you got to think, in her mind, you a billionaire. So she already thinking you finna ask for dummy money. You just go for the 10 What? We from the hood. 10000 Bitch, I'm rich. See, you don't, look, look, you don't, no, you can't go higher than 10. You got to go for the small, boom, right? So you get the 10, right? Now, once you get the 10, y'all already in a relationship. This is what you're not understanding. Once you get the 10, once you get the 10 bands, y'all in a relationship now. Y'all actually together, right? Y'all bind it together. Like, it ain't no breaking up now. Y'all together. So, boom. You got the 10 bands. Y'all in a relationship. You tell her shit ain't working out. You feel me? Now, boom. She didn't let you move in and all that. You like, I thought the 10 bands was going to be enough. But now they're confiscating all my stuff. Like, I, boom. She's like, well, you know, you can stay with me just until you get right. Now, boom. Now you stand in the condo. Two-story condo, downtown LA, high-rise, skyscraper. Boom, you lit. <clears throat> right? Wait, hold on, hold on, y'all. Y'all come back in. I'm going to cancel this one. Hold on. Y'all got to come back in. Come back in. Come back.